Okay, today is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2013, and this is a demonstration of a gemstone therapy session using the foundation training skills and tools. <laughs> So I always begin a foundation training, or actually any gemstone therapy session, with step one of the basic gemstone therapy protocol, which is all about personal preparation. You have to be comfortable. You have to be um, feeling centered and fully prepared for the gift of gemstone therapy that you're going to give. And what I like to do is wash my hands, use the bathroom, get myself physically comfortable. I took my shoes off for today. <laughs> and then inwardly, spiritually comfortable, I declare myself a vehicle for the healing life-giving energies. I invite the presence of my guides, masters, and teachers that I may be the best vehicle that I can be for the healing life-giving energies. And I'll do this all within my head. I'm just thinking aloud so you can hear me. And I'll check my necklaces. Okay, this is good. It's coming in. My earrings are okay. Is there anything else that I need? Sprays? No. Remedies? Other gemstone support? No. So I feel I'm good to go. So I have a volunteer client. Uh, welcome, Carrie Ann. Okay. So thank you for <laughs> for offering to help demonstrate a gemstone therapy session. Thank you for having me. Okay. So would you like to lay down? Um, which end? Head that way. I know it's a little bit warm in here, so I'll we'll just carve you a little bit. So you feel nice and safe. Is that is that good? That's good. Okay. So free up your feet. And if at any point you feel uncomfortable, just let me know. Let your toes breathe a little bit. Do you have my hands up or down? Whatever feels more comfortable for you. I'm gonna check for any energy obstructors. Um, you still got your little headband thing. Is that you want me to take it? I put it over there. With my sunglasses. Oh, sunglasses. Okay. Rings are fine, actually. Earrings are fine. And if you would like to invite any inner guides, masters, and teachers that you work with that you would like for inner spiritual support, you're welcome to do that. Guardian angels, even ancestors who may have passed. Okay. You're welcome to do that. Okay. And I'm just sensing the space between us. Okay. Are you ready to begin? I am. Okay, thank you. And we're going to start with placing the foundation five, which will give you some nice nourishment and also support for the session. I'm starting with Rubionics. Dark Green Aventurine Savorite. And it's very clear how far up her body it wants the necklace to go. I'm not sure, I can just sort of go back and forth a little bit. And then I go left and right to make sure the symbiotics are placed just right. There we go. The agate citrine is next. Interesting. It to be right down here as well. Left and right. There is no wrong orientation of the Foundation Five. It's whatever her body wants. 
and left and right. And I'm just noticing that the symbiotics are all very much... Well, actually, this one, the, the two pink tourmaline are shifted a little to the left, and the citrine are a little to the right, and the savorite are equal. So that's just something that I just pay attention to. And the ruby is exactly on the midline. Just a mental note that I might take. All right, that's step three. Step four of the basic gemstone therapy protocol is a clearing, and I'm going to use the clearing sprays. I know you're familiar with these. We're going to start with the energy clearing. This is just a basic clearing of many types of random energies. in your crown. Okay, now into your brow chakra, your forehead. And throat. I'm covering her face so the spray doesn't land in her eyes. You never know when the client might get curious and open their eyes. I'm circling in to find stomach. Circling in to find the right point for sacral. Same thing for root. So that was steps two and three and step four. In the clearing, it's target areas. Just clearing down her legs, especially the outsides. down the side of the body as well. Shoulders. Probably like the back of her head as well. Okay. And then what I call vectors. These are projections into the field. And I'm looking where they might be. I sense them as concentrations or thicknesses of unwanted energies. And her field will get progressively lighter and freer as we use the energy clearing through these vectors. I'm going to do the same five steps with the electromagnetic radiation protection spray. Okay, into your crown. And she doesn't want to spray out the crown. To brow. No spray out. Root. Okay, here comes heart, stomach. Wow, interesting. A few squirts in, but none out. Sacral. Okay, target areas. Yes. Ankles. And down the legs. So if you're new to gemstone therapy, I'm not going to go explaining everything that I'm doing right now because I do want to honor my client. This is on hips. Shoulders and along the spine. 
just mentally opening the path for that to go all the way down her back. I just visualize that spray going right down. Okay, we have target areas, and now vectors. Okay. Now we will repeat the five steps of the clearing using the diamond spray. Letting the mist settle. These are just baby squirts. <laughs> if you press just lightly, you could get a little tiny squirt out of the bottle. Target areas. Get down the leg and hip. So, Carrie, Ann, at this point in the session, if there's something that you would like to focus on, an intention, something that you would like to work on, um, if you could reach deeply within yourself and try to pull that forward, ask your higher self or that part of you that knows, what would be your best intention for the session today? Okay. Then you can either say it aloud if you'd like, or you can keep it to yourself. I'll keep it to myself. All right. You got it, though? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So those of you who have been to the gemstone therapy workshops know how much an intention can shift what gemstones are required. So that's an important step before we actually begin the therapy. So while you're holding your intention, I'm going to see if there's any other necklace placements that you might need. I'm using, in my toolbox, I have the nourishing necklaces, and I have a few of the the less expensive necklaces. I have got Myala, I have the Upper Skin Jasper Peach Aventurine, and the Demortrite Carnelian in my available toolbox for today. And actually, she's going for this Myala right away. Let's see where I might want to go. Okay, this is going to go down your midline. Can Lift up your fingers. There. And she's calling for the heart song. And I can I can really feel like she wants it. See, that pulls right in. But I'm not getting a placement point, which lets me know that I can apply this in the aura, but I also have a crystal cluster available. So I could also ask, does she want this in the cluster? And I get a yes. So I'm going to find the best location for my cluster. It's going to be right here on the side of the table. And I'm going to place the necklace on the cluster. This is instantly going to fill her space. Already the energies are about here. She's beginning to draw upon that heart song energy. So it's nice working with the cluster because it's like having another pair of hands. Okay, other necklaces? No. All right, white barrel wand? Yes.
bring in the white barrel wand and it looks like she wants to turn this way. Grab a little piece of tape, secure the end. This lets me know she wants a little bit deeper clearing than what we did with the sprays. So general circling, very common for a whole body clearing. Right back here, the wand with the white barrel turquoise is already going into an extraction mode. I locate the area where I'm going to toss this unwanted energy that's anchored kind of right behind her head here. Come back in. Yep, looks like there's more. This is a little further down the back of her head. Okay, here we go. Vertical circling, moving energy down her body. Kind of makes sense after the extraction out of her head. Her body's asking to be somewhat homogenized, if you will. Looks like the gemstones have picked up the vortex flow of her crown chakra. So we're following the crown chakra vortex. It's a nice vortex shape. Alright, I'm just going to ask if she needs some chakra healer spray, and I get a yes. Okay, so I'm going to spray in and spray out. Oh, quite a bit. Going out of her crown. Karen, are you sensing anything going on at your head? Yes, actually. I can feel something on behind my right ear, towards the back of my neck. And what does that feel like? Um, it's warm, like it's like a hot feeling, like a warm feeling. It's almost like an ear pain, but not really painful, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just going to let go. So we'll move. So we'll start all over again. See if there's another area. Yes, there is. Still around the head. Now it's kind of interesting. Her higher intelligence must have known that she's going to have all this work done around her head, and that's why those foundation five were so far down her legs. It didn't occur to me at the time, but it makes a lot of sense now that we're in the session. Okay, we're going into extraction mode again. This is about three inches above your right ear. Coming back in, parallel to the body, see if there's any more, and there is. Holding.
is a very classic movement. We're following her personal vortex. Personal vortex is the term we give for the way the aura should rotate around your body in order to deflect anything that you don't want, but also in order to attract those things that are helpful and beneficial for you. Holding. Okay, now let's go. Circling again. Figure eight. The cross of the figure eight is moving up her body. And I would ter interpret that as a way of just helping her to put together all the work that she's receiving. And there's a let go. And she's done with the wand. Checks her. Is everything in balance? Yes. Something more? Yes. Is it a necklace? No. Remedy? Spray? Mandala? Yes. Miniature mandala? No. Custom. Oh. No, it wasn't a custom. It's one of these um, aura nourishing mandalas. We have the aura nourishing necklaces, and each aura nourishing necklace has a corresponding model that goes with it. Interesting. It's the Dream On Mandala. Uh, indigo in the center, surrounded by six chara and six white quartz. Bring it in. Feels like her body is just soaking in these energies. How are you doing? Good. Crown chakra again. Something interesting happened when working on her crown previously. The apex of the vortex was more in the center of the head. And when I started working with this particular mandala, it shifted forward, which is more in position to where her anterior fontanelle was when she was an infant. And it's one of those shifts in the location of the, of the chakra vortexes that seem to be occurring. And within this session, she made that, you might say, evolutionary shift. Where her body realized, you know what? I can get a lot more functionality from my crown chakra if it's centered uh -huh. a little bit, little bit t more toward the front where the anterior fontanelle would be, or was, when she was an infant. Okay. 
And what just happened at her head looked like it might have been a pull away, but her body's energy just sucked this mandala right back. We're doing a vertical circling down her midline, now up the midline. Bring that intuitive energy more into her into her body. The more linked the physical can be with the intuitive self or the intuitive layer of the aura, the more likely we are to act on our intuition. Some unlocking at um, left reproductive window. Circling. Oh, this is a spiral in, spiral out. So whatever's going on in that window wants to be broadcast throughout her body and aura. Personal vortex. What are you noticing, Karia? Um, almost a numbness on my right side. Mm -hmm. From my elbow down to my fingertip, down to my leg, and on my right foot. Mm -hmm. So a numbness. I even bent my fingers up a little bit because it felt like they were like numb. In this position, the mandala tends to be working with the spine. And it looks like there's actually some blockages, and particularly in the sacrum. And that's where we're working right now. So some sort of interference with the nervous system is being worked through could be what's how it's manifesting with that sense of numbness could also be there's certain traumas that could be working forward and working up to be released and just let go White pearl turquoise wand. Meridian running right up the midline. Yep, clearing, clearing the sacrum. Following the edges of the sacrum. Or tracing, you might say, the edges. Another release out of the crown. Yep, 
there's more. since there could be a spray that could be helpful here. Um, okay, what's going to unlock this for us? Oh, spawn health. Okay. Spray in toward the target area on her head. And spray out. Keep your eyes closed so I just spray it over your head. The energy is moving a lot more freely. This type of circling, we're working with the personal vortex as it exists at the top of her head. If you recall, we got some good movement around knees down. But I won't know if her body wants to work on personal vortex until her energy field invites the gemstones to do that. Okay, we're working down the spine on the top. And I know that because the wand is pointing behind the head. This is clearly not working with the crown chakra. It's too far back. So I know this is working with the spine. A slight change in the orientation of the wand it lets me know that we're working back and forth, left side and right side of the spine. Actually, the wand is beginning to unlock. I don't often get unlocking with a wand, so there's definitely some congestion that this these gems have picked up along the spine. I could probably sense it with my other hand. In fact, I could... Is there any Jamandala? No. Yes, any Jamandala. There we go. This is just what I have in mind. The light green adventuring mini Jamandala. It's going to help her locate just where this is. Working up and down the spine. So as the light green adventuring locates the areas of low vibratory rate, the wand here is clearing them. Wand and rod are now working independently. And yet together. Isn't that interesting? this again? No. Nope. Okay. Everything is good. 
Remedy spray, another necklace, another mandala. Yes. Ninja mandala, custom, or one of the or inertia. No, she wants a custom mandala. Yay! <laughs> I get to show you one of those. Okay. I'm taking a blank piece of beeswax on a therapy rod. I've got all my sphere collection right here in the album. So Carrie, what we're going to be doing is building a mandala that's very specific to your intention. So if you could just put your thoughts on that again. Okay. Now she does her field shifts. Okay, do we have a center stone? No. Cir first circle, yes. In the first circle there are one, two, three, four gemstones. And we know one, two, three, four, all the same. Okay. And now we'll identify what they are. So it's a pink coral. Actually, the first thing I have to do is find where the center is. So I'm going to use one of the pink corals to find that center. So now I have that center is now indented in the wax. So I can place the what the pink corals equidistantly around that center. I'll show you what it looks like. Pink coral supports growth. It also supports repair. If there's any damaged tissue, the repair of those that tissue. In an adult, it can have some effect on the um, hormones. It'll be a very gentle effect, much much less so than the pink tourmaline. So that's what that looks like. If you can see a little indentation that I made in the center to mark the center so that all of these can be equidistant to the center stone that may or may not come in. Introducing this to her field. Now if I had worked with Carrie Ann previously, if she was a longtime client and was familiar with custom mandalas, I might go ahead and build more onto the mandala. But this is the first time that she's experienced one. So we're going to give it to her body one step at a time. Holding. Processing. Let go. Do we know the center stone? No. First circle, yes. One, two, three, four gemstones. Are they all the same? Yes. We've got rhodochrosite. Pretty, pretty. 
So what rotocrossi has a lot to do with is readjusting and helping us let go of patterns that might be holding us back. So what this mandala is telling me so far is that you may have some repair processes that aren't serving you as well as they could. Your body would like to learn how to stimulate new growth. It could be physical regrowth of tissue. It could even be emotional growth, spiritual growth. Something to do with new growth, changing the way you look at it, the way your body responds to it. Mm. Up upgrading upgrading the way your body is going to be handling the situation. Letting go of the patterns that might be limiting your ability to grow. That was a push away, actually. Um, okay. Center stone, yes. Okay, center stone is green tourmaline. Green tourmaline has an association with the masculine energy flows, which also exists in women. We have, everyone has both masculine and feminine energy flows. What's interesting is that green tourmaline is also involved with tissue repair. So there's an interesting correlation with the pink coral. Bring this one on its side. Let me see. figure eights up and down her body. She's working on integrating the effect of the gems throughout herself. Tying it all together. Tying together the effects. Change, no, add, yes. Second circle, yes. One, two, three, four gemstones. They're going to be next to, well, we don't know where they're going to be, but we know they're four. I'm circling the gem in to see where its exact placement location wants to be.
Is there another gemstone? No. We've added chrysoprase. If you look carefully, you'll see that they are actually very much correct in relation to each other, but they're a little off-center in relation to the center stone. But they are precisely in between the rhodochrosite and the peach, um, the pink coral. Chrysoprase works at the atomic level, and it helps to make that connection between one's physical and, you might say, spiritual essence, the whole being essence. The atomic level can be very squirrely, moving freely between matter and energy. So it's not surprising that Chrysoprase wants to do something silly on the mandala, <laughs> expressing its individuality. I'm beginning to get a movement of this wand that reminds me of an extraction movement, and these gems cannot handle an extraction. If I try doing an extraction with gemstones other than white barrel turquoise, I could have a mess on my hands. So I'm going to lay down the mandala next to her. It's pointing to her, and we're going to focus on this extraction. Actually, the extraction location has moved down her spine. Meridian running again, clearing that central channel, clearing that spine. Look at here. We're able to do the vertical circling of her um, personal vortex. Here we see down here, lower half of her body, we have nice, um, nice large movements. Gets a little bit constricted here, but hey, before we had nothing, so this is a nice improvement. Nice large circling at head, upper chest as well. It starts to constrict at the lower abdomen. Now that mandala is facing her, so it's still working. It's still connected to her. Was, her breathing just changed. There was um, a little shift in her hips. Looks like the hips still feel kind of a little frozen actually, but there was a much more of an opening that just occurred for about waist up and her breathing changed. means that more of her aura is getting involved and is becoming 
in harmony and in synchrony with her personal vortex. be ending in the next minute or so, coming to a close. midline clearing. And the wand leaves her feet. song comes off, cluster, this is going to come off, foundation five would stay on just for a little bit longer. What's really interesting about your session was that you had a lot of work done at your head, mm -hmm. stuff wanting to come off, and I think one of the really key things that was going on was clearing your spine, mm -hmm. a lot of work clearing out the spine. By the way, how's the numbness? Good. Good. I was able to put my hand back up again, because I had to put my arm down for a minute because it felt like it was like just falling asleep numb. Huh. I even had to push my fingers up because I, I felt like I couldn't feel my fingertips and I just wanted to feel the towel yeah. or the sheet underneath because I'm, I just couldn't feel it. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point where I could put my hands back up again, so good. Okay, good. Yeah. And what else was really significant was that your personal vortex, which is a measure of how well your energies bring what you need and jettison what you don't, it, when we started, it was good from about your knees down Mm -hmm. And then above your head it was fine, the rest of it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And then it started building up your legs and it started building this way and then finally we got so that it was just lower abdomen mm -hmm. that was stuck. When that opened, you breathe differently. You're, yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. I, I did notice that. I actually, and when you were working with the custom mandala, I, there was, you know, I, I knew what my focus was because I kind of knew before I came in here. Mm -hmm. and. It was interesting how it was. It was just interesting. Yeah. So you I could feel how things were shifting. I could definitely feel that things were shifting. In fact, at one point, I felt almost as if, like, I kind of panicked for a second because I felt like I had was taking my left arm and just basically scraping things off of me. And I thought I was physically doing it for a second. I had to stop and think, "No, I haven't moved." Uh -huh. But in and then I was like, well, did I fall asleep? <laughs> because I, I really thought that I had done it. So that was, and that was interesting. And, and then I was listening to what you were saying, and it was just right along. And I had my eyes closed the whole time. So I really, other than sensing where the light was and where you were blocking the light, I really didn't know where you were, but I could feel it. Mm. And it was definitely interesting. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it, I, it was kind of a surreal moment mm -hmm. to realize I really wasn't moving. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. No, you're here. Yeah, yeah. Here. And I could tell the difference in breathing, too. I, I definitely felt that shift. Mm -hmm. But, you know, same thing with the, you know, I could feel it change out of my ear. I knew 
you know, as soon as you said that you, you know, when you first sprayed down my spine in the very, very beginning clearing, I knew that my spine was somehow going to be affected by the whole thing, uh -huh. which I kind of knew coming into this, that uh -huh. there were, may have been something along those lines, which is just very interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. This is your mom, isn't it beautiful? That is very pretty. I like that. Yeah. I like the colors. I'll we'll take a picture of it before we dismantle it. Yeah, so definitely. You can look at it every once in a while later on to help you come back to this place. Ironically, right I know exactly why the stones are there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Although you know. I, I suspected the center one would have been a pink tourmaline instead of green, but hey, I was close. <laughs> but yeah, I know, I knew exactly which ones were there for what reasons. As soon as you said them, I was like, uh -huh. she's right. I knew it. Yeah. So... And you know enough about the stones to sort yeah. of understand what their message is. Yeah, so as soon as you would say one, I would be like, oh, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really neat. Let's see, these are ready to come off. Yeah. And I'm taking them off in the order that her body's ready to release them. The spray or the remedy. Actually, it's like you still want that mother of pearl. Oops. So I'm just gonna let you hold on to that for a while. And you're welcome to get up when you're ready. Oh, thank you. Did sit, um, dangle your feet off the side of the table so we can do this slowly. Okay, and check your alignment here. Got the spinal health. We're not done yet. Just felt like you needed to be in a sitting position for the integration. I, I felt a little to, felt a little dizzy when I first sat up too. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to always end with a formal integration. Most of the time, the client will be lying down for this, but it just felt right to have her seated. So I'd like to invite, actually let me do it this way, okay. I'd like to invite all the work we've done today to be fully received, accepted, remembered, and allowed in throughout all aspects of your body and being, including north-south, east and west front and back, from the soul star within you, to the earth star beneath your feet, to the heaven star above you. May all three dimensions be fully integrated. Now the integration moves into the fourth dimension including time, space, and causation, past, present, and future. Here and now, and into the forever. Now the integration moves into the fifth dimension including all of mind, and 
and then beyond to include all spirituality. May your entire being now be fully integrated. I'd like to thank all of the inner support we got from the guides, masters, and teachers. I'd like to be grateful for the gemstones and the diamonds for their selfless service. I extend my gratitude to the earth who gave them to us, to the heaven energies that feed them. And thank you for allowing me to be part of your journey today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come. Do you want me to hold on to this? Yeah, you can hold on to that for a little bit. Go ahead, stand up. See how you're doing. Are you feeling a little more in your body? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Very calm. Good. Very calm. Yeah. Just you're in good. your feet. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel very... A lot less scattered. Good. I feel very good. Thank so you. So see if your body still wants that. See if it's tuned to you. Coil it first, because I like to coil it first. And it comes to here, so that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. I think I'm okay. Okay. Thank you. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet because you still have to do step 10 of the protocol, which is cleaning your tools. I had everything over here, but I want to switch, switch them so that you can see better. So I'm just going to put everything right here. Foundation five are going to need the most cleaning and anything that was laying on her body. This heart song that was on the crystal cluster, actually, that's that really doesn't need too much, but I'm going to include it anyway. In fact, being having been on the quartz, it looks it's dazzling. It very much likes that. We also used the Lake Green Adventure Mandala. We used our Dream On mandala, and this is her custom mandala. That's all we used. I already cleared the wand. Before I put it, before I put the wand down, I always give it a little spritz, and that cleans it. The orientation of the coil is very much self-cleaning in a way. It accentuates the ability of the spray to do an efficient job. So I'm just going to put that back. Okay. My three sprays. Put away the spinal health. I'm going to start with the energy clearing. The object of the game is to use the least amount of spray as efficiently as you can. And a lot of the times, you're really, you're just spraying the outside, the energy field. Because what the, if the gem has picked up something in a client's energy field, that's where it's going to be in the gemstones. Which is the reason why water cleansing only cleans the gems and it's really not as effective. So using little micro bursts, just pressing the nozzle jam a little bit, I was able to get four sprays out of one full um, pressing of the, the nozzle here. And a lot of, a lot of energy surrounding, way out here in what would be the mental body. Okay. And it's very interesting, spraying out here is making these shine a little better. 
a minute there, I thought I'd have to spray directly some of the symbiotics, but now that this outer shell is cleared, it's fine. It might even be the intuitive layer here, and I say that because we were using the Dream On Mandala. I'm going to cleanse the mandala directly, turning it, giving it some squirts, and doing that with the gems present gives them a little extra clearing as well. That one needs a direct hit. Okay. EMR. Stones of the necklaces. Yeah, look at that. Real far away. Okay. And diamond. Yeah, it's, again, it's this outer aura of the necklaces. And let's see if any in particular stones need to be cleared. I really don't get that sense. Oh, diamond. That's good. They're all good. Okay, the mandalas. Now, I keep the Light Green Adventuring mandala intact all the time because I use it so much. I'm just going to very gently rub it against the towel, clear away any excess moisture. I keep my Dream On mandala intact all the time. So that's nice and dry now. And this is Carrie Ann's custom mandala. And we're going to photograph that for her before we take it apart, which I'll do later on. Put those away. Take one more towel. Place it over the necklaces and just dry them off and also kind of squeeze out any excess unwanted energies that might want to come out. I like the image of squeezing the toothpaste out of the tube. And there they go. So this goes into the laundry pile with the other sheets. And this towel will also, after I put everything away, um, and I will do that afterwards since I have a lot of single spheres to put away too. Well, I noticed that you do have a question here. Uh, when you do a remote session, are you visualizing these different movements and placements happening like the session you demonstrated, or is it a completely different system? Uh, visualizing the movements. Um, I'm following the body's energy field is what's happening. I don't know what is going to happen. Sometimes I'll sense something's about to happen, but all of those movements that you saw happen because her body's energy field was guiding those gemstones to make those movements. So I, I'm not sure if that helps, but, but that's what's going on. Um, I am able to sense where the gems might be working. For example, when we were working below her feet, I, I, and I think I mentioned it, I could sense that we were working along the spine and if there were blockages along the spine and those might have been the blockages that were preventing her personal vortex from being as effective as it could be. Yeah. If there's other questions. Okay. So if you have any other questions, please go ahead and go ahead type them in. Okay, when you do an extraction, does the white barrel make the same jiggle? Uh, 
<clears throat> yes, pretty much the, the motion of the extraction technique is the same all the time. When your white barrel, it could start jiggling or it could start doing these very small circling motions and plunging motions. That's a sign that you've got unwanted energy there and then you have to go ahead and do the full extraction technique which involves using your your um, eyes to locate exactly what the path of that unwanted energy where it's going to go and then flicking your wrist in, in a certain way to make sure that energy gets outside and we usually look for a part of the ground somewhere on the earth that will receive this energy So thank you everyone for attending. Um, in the near future I'm going to be presenting an introductory gemstone therapy a multiple weekend workshop by webinar so you can attend um, remotely wherever you're located. No need to travel, no airplanes, no security, no need to check into ho a hotel or rent a car. Uh, I believe that's going to be happening in September. I'll give you the exact date shortly, but we'll be covering all the information that you're going to need to know to complete the foundation training open book exam, and also just for personal interest, being able to know how to use these tools to work on yourself and to work on family and friends. So, um, oh, we have a question. Would I quickly explain the rod's orientation to the body? Yeah, the, the orientation of the white barrel therapy wand is very important. And um, we'll talk about that in our introduction to gemstone therapy webinars when we discuss how to use the white barrel wand. But it is very important to keep it parallel to the spine and parallel to whatever portion of the body that you are working, wherever you are working. Geometry is very important. The more precise your angles, the angles of the wand, um, let's see, I have a wand here. Um, I just have a rod. <laughs> rod, no wand. Wait. Here we go. Here's, here's a proper wand. The, the more proper you are in your geometry, whether you're, you're like this and working with a body parallel to the surface of the body, parallel to the spine. With white barrel, that has a different effect than working this way and, and working this way, and we'll cover that in another webinar as well. Following the contours of the body so that it's always parallel to whatever surface that you're working on. So right now, I'm not parallel to my spine, but I'm parallel to the bone in my arm. I'm parallel to the surface of the skin where I'm working. And if the wand were to go from a parallel position and suddenly it goes up like this and starts doing the, that telltale plunging and circling motion, that's an indication you've got an anchor of unwanted energy or a, an accumulation, a blockage there that the body is ready to release and it recognizes the white barrel turquoise as an, a tool that can help it to do that. It's, it's capable of doing that. I have not met another gemstone that's capable of doing that. So if you're using another, any other necklace on a wand to nourish the body and it starts doing this motion you've got to switch to a white barrel turquoise wand because if you try to do an extraction with any other gemstone necklace it's not going to work. The energies might come out of the body but then they're going to spill all over. Other gemstones don't have the ability of the, the white barrel to do that extraction and, and help you completely release and thoroughly and efficiently remove the unwanted energy. So it's a very powerful tool and it's just a it just requires responsible use of it to, to make sure that the clearing is done properly and completely. So that, that's the quick 
version. <laughs> um, oh, and also the therapy rod, yes. Okay. Um, I don't feel I should use her mandala. So, um, okay, I'm going to use the like, green adventuring mother of pearl mini to mandala so I actually can, I won't be faking it, I'll actually be showing you. You're going to bring the rod in. The face of the rod remains parallel to your body, and the rod itself is pointing to the center of your whatever anatomy you're working on. So right now it's working on my my chest. As you can see, it's pointing to me. The disc is flat, and if I were to come down my arm, the the face of the rod stays parallel to whatever area of my body that I am working. It's constantly pointing to the core of me. Actually, it's coming around the back of my neck. And I'm just following it. I have I have no preconceived ideas where this thing's going to go. But it's telling me, hey, you know what? It's landing here at the back of my neck. It's letting me know, hey, you know what? There's something going on here. And, uh, well, now that we brought it up, let me get out my white barrel wand. Okay. So much for an easy demonstration. I'm getting I'm getting the feeling of an increased condensation or collection of unwanted energy there. So I'm going to see if the white barrel wand comes in and yes it does. It does come in. And look, it turns right to the side. When you're working on yourself, you have to be a little more flexible as far as proper orientations. Okay, here we go. Come back in parallel to the surface. I can actually feel my neck's looser. There's a little more, a little more to come out. All right, I feel like it's grabbed hold. Where the energy has grabbed hold of the necklace or the, the gems have grabbed hold of the energy, it's probably a little bit of both. And I just flick it out. And again, it feels a lot better in here. And then I could just continue. And if I wanted to do a self-therapy, just locating with the like Green Adventuring Mini Jamanda, I could just keep locating areas that, that would like to receive work. And if I find an area, here's another one. <laughs> um, does it need this? No. It, it could use one of the one of the aura nourishing necklaces. Actually, it's calling for this heart song. So I could just rub it here. I could put the heart song on a wand and apply the wand around my field. I could get the heart song jamandala that has all of these gems and I could apply that to my body. Or I could say, hey, you know what? That's it's time to go. I gotta get to work or whatever and I know that my body wants the heart song, so I could just put it on and know that it's going to be supporting this area here because it wanted it and go about my day. Next time I wanted to work on myself, bring out my light green adventuring mandala and find another target area if I don't already have one. <laughs> so. Anyway, that gives you a sense of what uh, the basic gemstone therapy protocol is like and the unlimited work that you can do simply with the foundation level tools. I want to thank you for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you again on another webinar. <laughs>